Welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy, and this is the lecture for the month of June 2015. It's called Let's, Let's Talk Hands. Let's talk hands. Now, let's really, let's really talk hands now. This is a very widely requested lecture, and the reason I'm, I'm doing it today is because I saw a post on Animation Mentor uh, Facebook page, and there was a student, a well, I'm sure well-intentioned student, um, posting um, his hand poses um, up for critique on on the page. He posted some images uh, and was asking for feedback on the hand poses. And uh, the reason it's it's been so long, even though this has been a, a widely requested lecture, and, um, and I normally like to do the ones that are requested the most, um, the reason I've, I've put this off is because, to be perfectly honest, there is no actual real way to simplify hand animation in, uh, in all contexts. So there's no general way to simplify um, hand animation. It is more complex than, than lip sync, and it has a lot of the same properties of, of lip sync. And so let me describe. Let me describe why. Uh, going back to that story about the animator who posted on the Animation Mentor Facebook, <clears throat> this animator, uh, well intentioned, um, was asking for feedback on the communication and the and the strength of um, his hand poses. And I can't show them because it's not my work. Um, but the the, the point is, is when you're trying to get some sort of communication across with hand poses, the context is so extremely important. And without the context, which means the frames before and the frames after and the entire scene sort of simplified to the animation, the movement. Um, it, it's so it's so important. Um, God, that light got bright, didn't it? It started off pretty dark, and now it's all, it's like it's like washing me out. It's fine though. Um, it's so important that you basically that you, there's there's not actually a way that you can get away from that. And so I, I responded. Um, maybe it was a little bit too much of a quip, but I wrote. Um, Hand poses are a lie. Like lip sync, you only get communication in movement. And that, that was my response to that um, to that animator. And <clears throat> I, what I mean by that is the motion of the hand is going to play uh, against and with the motion of the body and the context of the scene. So there is no one hand pose for communicating angry. All right? It could be a fist. But what if I'm like, yeah, you won, yeah. All right? Yeah, you slow down. What is this? What does this communicate? This person? Am I pushing a button? Am I pulling it away? Did I touch a candle, a flame, and I'm pulling it away? You see, Th is, is this the most communicative first frame of a finger that's been burned by, by a little, imagine a little flame right here, a finger that's been burned, or do I want to change the hand pose on the first frame and then bring it away and, and, and shake it out. Do you see how, how immediately complex it gets when you're talking about hand poses? It's the exact same thing as, as what I like to talk about with lip sync. With lip sync, you, like, there's no, like, if you have, and I've said this before, if you have a lip sync, like a mouth pose library, throw it away right now. If you can delete, delete it. 
If it's a shelf, remove it from your Maya installation. Just do it. Just do it. Your animation will immediately get better upon deleting your mouth pose library. Okay. Now, for speed sake, sometimes it's nice to get to have a um, a uh, a pose library for hands, just because you know manipulating all the digits kind of sometimes is a little bit of a pain in the butt. But really, I mean, most rigs have like you know finger curl. You know, it's it's not like in the old days where you had like you know one FK digit you know or uh, sorry control per digit. And, and you had to, you know, bend each individual one, you know, for anything. Um, so it really uh, shouldn't take you too super long. But back to, to my example, this person had a hand pose that was the hand resting. And I wish I could show you, but it's, it's not my work, so I can't. Um, it was the hand resting on um, like a table. And the only thing that you could possibly critique about it was yes or no does it look like it's contacting the table but as far as the strength of the pose as far as how good the pose is um, you you can you can't go anywhere you can't go any further than physicality and physiology so w if the hand was at rest, would the pinky would the pinky be that far, you know, that far out, that spread out, or would it be closer and maybe curled a little bit? Like and you can there's there's also like there's no way to argue that. Cuz what if I just flop my hand down and it just happens so that the you know, the pinky kind of goes off and then I I, you know, just bring my hand back up onto that surface and the pinky's still a little bit spread. Um, or it's it's at rest. I mean, you, you just can't. You really can't say that there's one pose that is more natural or whatever than another. And and it's like and and hands. And this is maybe like the f the first tip that you can take from this from this lecture. Um, well, actually, no. The first thing is that there hand poses are a lie. But uh, second tip would be that um, hands even when they're like touching a surface, hands move around just as much as feet do on the ground. Even when a character is at rest, you should have their feet animated. Sliding, adjusting, rolling, rocking, um, that kind of stuff. Always keep the feet alive. Same thing with hands. Um, some of the Anim Gym entries that have had hand contact and hand in in interaction, I think I've pointed out almost every single one had a little bit too little um, hand interaction, too little hand uh, movement when even when it was in contact, it's like touching a door or holding onto something or grabbing onto something, like the hand like like came to a complete stop. And people, you know, there's little adjustments and there's always movement. And if it's resting on the ground, you know, as you're moving, the hand really it, it it's it's not there's n like no pressure on it, so your hand has like almost no friction keeping it straight in the pose that you you put it down on there so those are a couple little um, tips that you can actually universally apply to your hand um, animation um, but the first thing I wanted to do is um, sort of like unequivocally uh, deny the the link between like strong hand posing and the strength of hand animation it's it, it's just not real Okay, uh, that link is not there. Um, it's all about it's all about context. So let's go back to that example that I just gave um, with the with the candle. Okay, so you you can't tell if someone says like, "Hey, how do you guys like my hand pose?" and then everyone starts jumping in and they they're well meaning, but it means nothing. Like all of these ideas, they mean nothing. Like, oh, I think the thumb maybe should, you know, be tucked in a little bit tighter and, and maybe not so much cup on the on the uh, on the ring and, 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 and pinky. So like get those fingers a little bit more in a line. Oh no, that's too far. Maybe cup them a little bit again. Oh the finger, you know, change the angle there. Like as I'm saying that, like 
every I can do with my hand every single one of these like adjustments that I'm talking about and they're all kind of equally natural for me you see that you know up down with the finger there's a lot of range of motion in there you know hey you pointing at somebody look at that I mean most people would say that that's too you know, a normal point would be the the finger a little bit more, but I can imagine like ah, like in a, like a really excited scene, like shaking my finger, and like as you can see, the motion of of my body, the context of the scene I set up just now, I'm really excited, supports a little bit sloppier sort of point. Ah, I'm gonna get you. But if you're maybe toning everything down and you're like this this lawyer with with you know this like this this knowing that justice will be served, you might just have that very kind of a little bit more contained and, and confident. I'm gonna put you away where you belong. Skeletti. I don't know, I try to pick a mafia name. Apologies to all my uh, Italian viewers. I didn't mean to stereotype. Um, Scaletti uh, O'Harris. There, now he's Irish. You know what I'm saying? So, so, someone posts, again, someone posts like this, and then this, on Facebook. Everyone's like, oh, I really like this one. But if I'm like, I'm gonna get you! Like, that's not as fun as this one. I'm gonna get you! right it's not so so again if i haven't if i haven't beat this into your head enough hand posing is just like lip sync it's all about context okay well, let's let's take the um lip sync example um uh, uh, one more time with lip sync um there are some shapes that are uh, or some sounds um uh, uh phonemes that have a relative shape as their visim, right? The visual the visual shape that matches the sound you see, right? That's the visim. So some phonemes like like t for like a, a a t sound have a relative shape as their visim. So if I say two, then it only needs to be wider, the t sound only needs to be wider than the the vowel sound that comes after it two see that it starts two all right it just starts wider but if i am about to say the word t my mouth is going to load up that vowel see it's getting ready to for the e sound not the t and then the the corners are just you all you do for, to animate that is you just make the corners move. No jaw movement. T. All right, you see that? It only needs to be wider than the, 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 the sound after it. So it's relative. So you can't, so if someone, again, someone posts on Facebook, hey guys, what do you think of my T or my T shape? And they're like this. And someone's like, oh, that looks like CH. Well, that's weird because I, it's supposed to be the T at the beginning of the word two. Two. All right, it was wider than the U. Two. Looks like CH, right? Two. Chalula. All right, it's the exact same shape. That Vizim, that Vizim is, is the same. Okay, same thing with hands. Let's go back. Same thing with hands, all right? If I am going to anticipate a fist, all right, all you need to do is anticipate past wherever your hands are. There's no like, like set anticipation for a fist shape. But in context, I might really want to show a different thing in each scene that I'm that I'm animating. So, for instance, if I want to punch somebody and I'm 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 really thinking about it, anticipation is thought. 
So I might go and then um, make my fist and, and, and punch them. Is that going to be necessarily as uh, uh, stronger than another choice for that anticipation? We, we don't know. We have to see it in the context of the scene. Okay. Um, and then with, um, with, in terms of the uh, communication of that, the motion also has everything to do with it. So especially if I, like, like this camera is to me right now, whoa, look at that hand. Um, if, especially as this camera is to me right now, if I really like am sort of like putting it where the silhouette is like clearly visible and there's like nothing sort of sort of blocking that and I make that fist, all right, that's going to be a lot stronger than a shot where I'm, you know, going like this and like maybe that hand is going to get lost in silhouette. Now I'm wearing a different colored shirt than my hand and I'm sort of, you know, very nicely evenly lit. So so this is easy to, to read, but again, that context is going to be very important. One example I really like to give is in Presto, when the um, magician is revealing that he has a magic hat. And I can't show that either, but I'll describe it because I know it very well. He gets the hat out and he blows into it and the other hat um, a little bit of dust comes out, okay? And then he thinks to himself, oh, well, I've got to clean it. And if you didn't get it as an audience, if you didn't get that this hat is a portal to the other hat, he's going to show you right now. And what does he do? He takes a handkerchief out and he takes this pose, okay? Now, I said there's no such thing as a hand pose, but there is hand posing for the purpose of um, uh, of directly communicating um, uh, uh, one thing meaning um, if you think just about, about ballet dancers okay what they are doing is you know they're they're finishing move and their hand their hand is part of the move and that sort of like you know that that is supposed to be like a, a, a relaxing sort of beautiful motion that get that that extends and enhances the the motion of their body and the communication of of that idea all right I'm a dying swan and then the hand the hand like finishes that idea okay so there is posing like that all right, but there's not a hand pose that means angry. There's not a hand pose that means I'm about to grab something because it, it, you could come up with a million examples of, of what else that hand pose could, could be doing, okay? But there is hand posing for the, for the purposes of communicating something. So what he does is he takes out a handkerchief and he's holding it, but his pinky is straight up in the air like, uh, like an antenna, like a beacon. Now, why is he doing that? Is this kind of communicating that he's a little bit of like a, a, a stick in the butt kind of guy? A little bit, but more importantly, what it is meant to do is to give you an image that you can remember. Because what he does is he's apparently, he blows into the, into the hat and dust comes out the other one. And now he's apparently about to, about to clean it. And when he sticks his hand in another hand pops out of the other hat and it's the exact same pose and it's a unique pose it's a it's a very very um, interesting silhouette and it's done that way so that you can as an audience you can instantly clue in it's his hand okay it's not that you you like like because you could think of a couple different reasons why if you blow into one hat, you know, it comes out the other. Maybe that's the magic trick. Maybe maybe the magic trick is like, you know, just blowing air or um, they were connected in some way or maybe he's maybe he doesn't know why this happened or whatever. But if he takes out his handkerchief, sticks his hand in and immediately boom, another one pops out 
and he goes like this, like he he just like you know cleaned it with his handkerchief, all right, and then pulls it back out, and it's like this again. It is this has been posed in a way to communicate one single idea. Okay, so that is the that is the extent of when you should be thinking about a hand pose on its own communicating one simple idea all right um, um, and so so just so you know there are very few instances when you when you do that that is the that I mean, presto was like 2004 I think or 2005 I mean it's 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 like 10 years ago but it's still the strongest example that I can give to students talking about um, how hand posing can be um, can be utilized for communication of a, of a simple idea okay um, so let's let's talk a little bit about um, how the hands um, actually work. Um, just to talk a little bit about um, some physicality and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so Goon here um, has, you know, pretty much what I would consider like the baseline these days. There's um, basically just um, um, bit, uh, mid basin tip controls, roll and spread, and then he's got a, um, a grip, and which basically dials the um, controls up evenly on all of the fingers and he also has a master thumb where's the thumb grip um, thumb grip right here and now immediately you can see that the thumb grip really doesn't go in front of the fingers um, at all I was gonna say very well but it actually really doesn't go very nicely at all and so you have to normally roll this thumb out in order to get it like sitting somewhere nicely in front of it. So here we have a, a, a fist, a, a fist of sorts. Now again, I'm not going to call this fist a fist pose because this could be anything. This could be a fist that you're punching forward. This could be a fist you're slamming down on the ground. This could be um, him gripping the top of like a rum bottle. Where's the rum going? <clears throat> that was my, my Johnny Depp. What do you guys think? Uh, leave a comment below. 10 out of 10, right? Would Depp again? Okay. Um, so, um, in general, what I like to do um, when, when a character is in a um, walk cycle, what I like to do is I like to have a little bit of um, cup, a little bit of grip, and I like the thumb kind of straight across uh, their, their hand. So this is kind of a relaxed uh, hand as, as I see it. A little bit of grip, a little bit of cup. Cup means that the um, pinky and ring finger are m a little bit more um, inward and it's actually, these are your tarsals, oh, sorry, your carpals. Tarsals are your foot. These are your carpals, okay? The long bones that go to your, um, that go to your um, your fingers, okay. <clears throat> and these are a lot um, because your your fingers get stronger as you go. They're a lot the the carpals are a lot st uh, stiffer. The the closer you get over here, all right. They're connected to a lot more meat and they don't move in relation to each other as much. But over here by the pinky, this bone from here to here actually has, as you can see, actually has a lot of movement. Okay, so that's why in general, a little bit of cup is recommended almost, almost in, in, in all um, hand animation, all right? You're 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 probably going to be seeing those that pinky and ring finger tucked in a little bit more, and then I like to get the thumb, but I don't like thumb, um, I don't like to use thumb grip for this. All right, I like the thumb actually relatively straight. I find that that is is uh, 
um, more accurate to the relaxation. Now, remember, I'm not talking about posing here. I'm kind of talking more about just like physiology, okay? And then my thumbs, my thumbs bend backwards. My my uh, my thumbs just naturally bend backwards, um, pretty far. So um, and like like I can bend them and like it just physically stops. It doesn't hurt. It just like was doesn't go any further. So I'm not sure what this is, um, but my thumbs bend pretty far back. Um, but at any rate, so oh and also I only have one line. Um, most people have two lines. Um, both my hands only have one line. And so um, when I was when I used to draw hands as a little kid, I would draw the hand and then I would draw the line across and then the little curve line, you know, for the thumb, right? That just that just goes down here. And um, my art teachers would always say like, no, there's a line. This one goes up. This one goes up like this, and this one goes down. I'm like, no, they don't. Look. And so I've got I've got straight lines. One one line all the way across. Isn't that weird? I got weird hands. Kenny Roy's a freak. All right. Anyway, so just because it's a little bit of like personal preference, I like to make the tip of the thumb bend just a little bit backwards like that. Okay. And now it's a, there's a little bit too much air in here, so I'm just going to bring it in a little bit. There we go. So that's what I would say is a is a good starting point for a relaxed hand on something like a, a walk cycle, okay? Now, I have seen people go so far as to animate like the tips of the fingers like on something even like a walk cycle. It's not necessary. In fact, it's a waste of your time. It's much better for you to spend that time on performance. So the, some other part of the physicality than to like animate the fingertips on on a walk cycle. No one will see it. It's it's literally absolutely unseen, and it's not something like body language, like a little bit of like extra zhuzh you can add to the hips or the the chest or the cog or whatever. That that tiny little subtlety is going to be felt. You know, maybe it's too small to be seen, but the audience will feel it. They won't even feel it with the fingertips. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, so what I'm going to point out here now is that going from, <clears throat> going from a pose that is uh, essentially relaxed to a, a, a pose, um, let's pick one right now. Um, I really like I really like the pointing example because the point is is kind of really fun um, to uh, to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to set a key. Rather, not save. Actually, let me let me save. Actually, it's good. It's good to save. I've gone through entire lectures with, without saving just because I get so. Um, I get so like excited and, and over the top. <clears throat> Um, so uh, I'm going to set a key, okay, and we'll just do this over like 48 frames. And I'm going to kind of show the difference between those two contexts that that we that we had, okay. So I'm going to have a pose that we're going to save on a different frame that we're not going to see. So like we'll we'll save it and we'll move it to like frame 49, okay. Oops, don't play blast. I wanted to just enable step preview, that's all. Okay. So um, now let's come up with that that um, that point that we were talking about. But let's do sort of like the the standard one that we were talking about earlier that I think most people would kind of agree on. Now we can't use the master grip. Be careful when you're working with a, a rig that has this kind of um, this kind of control because a little bit of um, weird counter animation with the fingers bending themselves and the fingers unbending from a master grip 
or like a multi multi finger control um, can get a little bit wonky. Okay, so mid bass tip, ring bass tip, uh, pinky bass tip. All right, let's bring it in. Let's cup it a little bit. All right, and now the index bass. Let's bring it back a little bit. And I think the mid and tip of these three can be tucked in. I'm not the bass, though. Hold on a second. Bass, ring, tip. There we go. All right, and now let's make the thumb sort of sort of harmless. Um, and let's bring it in just a little bit. Maybe come back a bit with that. And maybe I can roll it. There we go. And now let's spread it back out. There we go. All right. So this is kind of, that index is probably too straight. Nobody can hold their finger that straight, right? All right. So this is kind of, in fact, let me, let me bring this down just a little bit. In fact, let me bring all of them down just a little bit so that we get that, ooh, the spread control. That's one thing that maybe you can add to your um, rig testing uh, workflow is to see what direction the spread controls actually um, actually move your, your, your fingers because on these, they actually move them different directions depending on which finger it is. And let's roll them in. Okay, so this is kind of a this is a hand pose I would say um, that is kind of the absolute generic. Um, um, it's it, it's inarguable that this is a point, right? And so if someone posted this online, you'd look at it and say, "All right, well." Um, cool point, but uh, maybe you can get that thumb um, um, a little bit closer to, oops, maybe, where is it? Maybe you can get that thumb a little bit closer and tuck it in so they're touching. There you go. Um, I don't know, maybe this, uh, this index is just a hair too straight down. Maybe bring it up. Like, like people can argue, and they will argue. The, the, the internet is a great place for that. Um, but but people can like talk for ad infinitum for 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 about like how this this pose is coming together. Okay, they can and they will. But how is this going to work with what we've decided this character is doing? All right. Now let's 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 see that. <clears throat> I'm going to just bring the rest of this kind of down and just do actually can I can I copy this that'd be great copy set paste nice noise that's another thing that's good you don't want finger controls to actually have um, uh, you, you want them to have the ability that's another thing you can add to your rig testing you want them to have the ability to copy finger poses across because it's 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 a time saving thing. I told you to delete your uh, lip pose library. You will be faster without it, and better, more importantly. Um, but if you want to have a starting point for finger poses, again, I I, I do understand that. That's fine. Okay. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to make these these two kinds of uh, 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 settings where it's very 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 calm and the first finger pose works and then it's a lot more broad and exaggerated and the and the the other finger pose um, makes a lot more sense. Okay. So 
Um, let's do this. Let's just key all this. And then let's move this right here. And I'm going to go just kind of a little bit straight ahead on this, if you don't mind. Local, please. Just not you. Thank you. So this is like that lawyer saying, I'm going to put you away. Right? You. I'm going to put you away. Scaletti O'Hara. All right, so we can we can we can retime this just really quickly with the dope sheet and just make a uh, just a just a really rough pass of of, um, of tempo on this. So um, what the, what is missing right now is just a quick um, breakdown where I can I uh, can actually delay the hand just a little bit more, just a little bit more. So I'll actually copy this right here and make them even even just a little bit more like this, and then set a key on everything, and then bring that up like that. There we go. So now it's not so much snappy. It's more just like a I'm 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 gonna put you away. I'm gonna put you away, Scaletti, O'Hara, uh, um, um, uh, Chan. Now he's Chinese. <clears throat> he's Italian, Irish, Chinese. Anyway, okay. So this makes a ton of sense for for this one. Right, and remember the the basic tenets of I used to say tenets, like there's like people living in a building of this idea that I have, the basic tenets of of uh, hand posing. Now the basic tenets of of lip sync still apply. You only need to communicate. You only need to go as far relatively as you have to in order to get something to um, read as a pose change in, in the hand. So looking at this, um, he's, he's doing that pose change on the hand. Um, uh, the keyframe before uh, he, he actually starts leaning forward. Or you could say it's actually the same keyframe, but the way that step keys works, you know what I'm saying. Um, what if we, what if we decided to make that a little bit more pronounced, okay? So to make this shot, to, to not change the energy of the shot, but to make this shot a little bit more about the point, let's just go in here and let's do that, that hand pose change. 
Let's copy that. And right here, let's paste it. Okay, and let's just change this pose only as much as we have to to get that that finger to read. And now I'm imagining we need to just tuck it up a little bit underneath um, right here. So we're kind of cheating. We're kind of cheating physicality right now. You know, I'm not working in the round. You know, I'm kind of just. Um, I'm kind of just you know, doing what I have to silhouette wise and this is this is just you know um, posing 101 like body posing 101 you know making a very interesting negative shape right here it's, it's always a, always a great idea um, so but now this version is much more about that finger becoming a point and then it's almost like the idea I'm going to get you Skeletti O'Hara Chan I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. In fact, let's try pushing that, that hand pose change one moment earlier. Okay, let's just try it. I don't know what's going to happen. But we need to do a lot more, um, a lot more help on this. And how is this coming up off the back of this? That's going to be a big pose change. This is ch changing a little bit of the performance, but let's see what this looks like. See how that tiny little change made this shot now about the point. It's all about the point. I'm I'm going to get you, Skeletti O'Hara Chan. Now, many animators would tell you it's too cliche and it's too like it, it, it's too first idea to have somebody point at another person. There is a discussion that I'm sure you've heard and maybe you've had with fellow animators about the reason things are cliche sometimes is because we all do them and it actually is a natural and good choice for the scene. That can happen. That can be a real thing. Okay. So I think that regardless of how we came to the decision to do this shot, we should discount the idea of, of something being too cliche right now and just go with you know animating like what we have. So let's not judge this on the merits of the performance choice itself. Um, let's just say that if we're going to do a point, this is that lawyer, that confident lawyer, staring the perp right in the eyes and saying, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Skeletti O'Hara Chan. <clears throat> um, uh, we need to we need to add something. Uh, Beauchamp the fourth. So now he's also a a French uh, aristocrat. Skeletti O'Hara Chan Beauchamp the fourth. I'm gonna get you <laughs> for all this weird weird multinational crime you're doing. Anyway. Okay, now let's let's save this. Okay, I'm gonna save this, and now I'm gonna do a a uh, another version where he's a lot more um, over the top. Hands um, exage. Okay. So remember that other hand pose that I had which is like all super tight and tucked in and the finger is almost like is like a it's like trying to like almost like snap itself off it's it's so straight mm -hmm. oh that reminds me of a funny story my my then girlfriend in, in in college thought it was so funny how I how I uh, give someone the middle finger. And I don't do that. I, I, I seriously haven't uh, um, 
not ironically given someone the middle finger um, I, I think in my entire life I think I've only given the finger to like my friends and like you know to make them laugh um, I because it's not a gesture I do but apparently you're supposed to like only have a little bit of middle finger showing and she showed me these two knuckles are bent like this and this one is down and the thumb is kind of like out like this is like the proper finger I always just put my middle finger up like this and and she always thought it was so funny and I was like I have this this one big straight finger I'm straight up but I think this is this is stronger isn't this stronger Urgh! you know I, I only do that as a, as a joke to people Urgh! take that right there's there's the right there's the left ah anyway this is too complicated all of this you know management of the other ones whatever anyway so, so remember that pose that I had. So let me let me build it real quick, uh, really quickly, not real quick. And um, we will just get totally crazy. Index, no, not that. Really tucked in, and now crazy cupping. Ooh, this cup isn't actually um, more cup. It's just offset on the um, on the the base. I didn't realize that. That's kind of um, that's kind of bullcrap, dude. All right. Well, we're gonna have to use um, spread and roll to get this like really tucked in. Stop, drop, and roll. And let's get this one. I tucked in like that. And then where's this one? This thumb is sometimes it's a good idea to just zero things and get them back to, you know, get them back to normal. This one is over the front basically kind of lying over the front of my index finger. Or I'm sorry, my middle finger. Right? And you gotta roll it this way, and then I think just mid. Just like this, and a little bit of, of curl on the thumb tip right there. Yeah, there we go. And now my finger, this one, maybe like a little hyper extended. I like that. And now look at that angle. Look at that angle off of off of the hand. And maybe that's a little bit too much hyperextension. Um, a little bit too much hyperextension, but let's get the rest of the finger actually backwards like that. <laughs> All right. Now this is this is a much more exaggerated sort of crazy pose, is it not? And if you posted this, let's face it forward. If you posted this on Facebook, people would probably say. Um, that doesn't look like a point to me. It looks broken. I don't know. Look at the look at the fingers. Look at how they are kind of like all crunched up and on the on the you know on the hand and then the thumb is in a weird place and then I don't even get me started on the index finger. That's probably what people would say. You could probably um, I'm going to say trick most animators into commenting somehow on this, right? How wrong it is. But look, look at my hand. In fact, my my uh, my ring and pinky way more crunched up than that one is. Look at that, incorrect pose, or point this way, incorrect pose. Bad bad hand pose. So I hope I'm I hope I'm making the point here. <clears throat> Now, this won't stand on its own. 
This will not stand without the support of the context of the scene. It won't support. It won't stand without the support of your performance choice, and the motion around it. Okay, something this exaggerated needs more movement to sort of explain its energy. Okay, so let me <clears throat> copy this uh, pose to all the all the rest of the things. Oops, I did not set a key. Why did that not work? Set. Okay, so now what I have to do is now I have to support this. Okay, so let's go back <clears throat> and um, make sure I have keys on all these frames. <clears throat> and drive this animation way up. I'm not gonna change the timing just yet. I will retime it when it's time. <clears throat> I look like I'm making funny faces. I can't help, but like, so I'm looking at him, and I just can't help sometimes. Like my eyebrows just like, just like find their way up there. And I'll be animating like this, and I'll like start getting a headache. <laughs> like, and someone will walk in, and I'll be like, oh, yes, what is it? Let's grab this and let's just let's just push it a little bit further. How come I can't rotate now? Okay, and now I'm just going to do a little bit of funny stuff right here where he basically leans in a little bit more, but the idea is um, I'm going to turn off step preview. Remember what this does is it makes it smooth, but I can, <clears throat> since there's only movement on the controls that I set right now, I can do like a couple steps like that and then go back to step preview and then I get sort of that that little transition that I needed so I can stay in step mode I can continue animating step but you know I just animated like a little bit of like a, a lean forward um, really quickly and the reason I did that was so that I can Get a little bit of motion on this. Um, on this finger. And now I want to. And remember the um, what I just did? The camera has a separate undo cue than the objects. So if I don't want to lose my camera view, I can rotate over here, select the thing I want, and then hit the um, left bracket and then it comes back.
And now let's delete all that. Let's just leave that hand back there. And there you have it. Oops, it's getting covered by my camera. And now, um, just a quick retime on that. Um, what I'm looking for is for just for this. to last a lot longer and for this part to be a lot shorter. So I'm going to move this and then compress all of this stuff together. Kind of blindly, yeah, I know. But remember what I do, I make the changes and then I then I decide if I like them or not. See, look at that. Now let's let's have this hand support this a little bit. Or this arm. And I put a little bit of motion on the head, but let's go a little bit more. It's always like shaking a little bit in his head. There you have it. It's that simple. It's that it's that clear and 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 simple with the with this new performance which is you 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 right? He needs a needs a, that that different point from the from the cool confident one but both are equally like real and existent and like truthful okay so um i mean it I, that's it there you have it right there so um remember let's recap real quick uh hand poses are a lie and the, the quicker you get rid of that uh the better you can use posing to communicate like a simple idea like for instance, this is a magic hat, and look here, boom, and then boop. See the same hand? Look, same hand, because the hand pose is so weird. Same hand, see, see, see? You can communicate that kind of um, thing. And then in motion, your hand pose will rely on the same way that lip sync does, the context the movement, the energy, and the support of the rest of the scene. And then from there, you're just, you're just trying to do good animation, good silhouette in your body, working with your hands, those kinds of choices. Okay. Uh, I'd love to see some, some hand work on your anim gym shots. Um, remember, though, it's, it, it comes last. If it's, if it's uh, uh, you know, remember, uh, your hands probably aren't going to work their way into your tempo pass. I'm just saying, um, hand, hand posing, I would think. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if you have like Hook, like being evil and like reaching out and trying to squish Tinkerbell, maybe like the <gasps> would be a, um, and then oh, she's not there. You know, maybe maybe this would actually be, actually, you know what? I take, take it all back. You actually probably could come up with a, a million ideas that um, where the hand posing would be part of your tempo. So I, so I take that back. But remember, it's going to be all about the context, the movement of the rest of the scene, and your performance choice that's going to dictate, uh, dictate your, hand, your hand movement. And then really, if you want to talk about like the hands contacting and like sliding off tables nicely and whatever, that's more like bookkeeping. That's going frame by frame and making sure that it's not intersecting. And you don't need me for that. You guys got that on lockdown. All right. This has been a lot of fun. Don't forget you can suggest more lectures in the resource wish list on the forums. 
and I look forward to seeing you guys uh, uh, more in the Anim Gym, around the forums, and uh, elsewhere on the site. It's been real. I'm Kenny Roy. Good luck with your animation. As always, rock on.